ball game on. Giving the people what they want. You know what they want, Zachary Dacry. It's that time. You want to hear from the big brother 11 bad boys, okay? That's the, it. The baddest on the season. The shot callers, yep. as we were known. There Come it is. On, put those is. Put those <laughs> cell phones up. Um, we've spent some time together over the last few weeks, but we haven't really done anything uh, on social media or anything like that. So I'm excited to spend some time with you and, uh, and kind of share how you and I are so similar and why it was such a great um, alliance that we had. I mean, alliance of two. Yep. Two, um, man two man army. Two man army. But we've also come out of the house and the first question I get asked typically is like, yo, are you and Ty still boys? Come on, man. Silly questions. You and there was there was no question for me and I know there was no question for you. Um, and I know that uh, it's not easy to be seen with me mm -hmm. because uh, of the way that I was edited or portrayed on the mm -hmm. show. Uh, but you had a similar type story, so uh, you didn't seem to let that bother you. So I just wanted to start by saying I appreciate you, my Price, friend. Bro, come on, we're locked in forever. That's my guy, forever. man. That's my guy. Um, what I wanted to do and, and what I've been pushing you to do was, uh, was give people uh, a little bit more of Ty. Mm -hmm. So that people who, because there was no live feeds this year, they didn't get to understand and appreciate the story that is you yeah. uh but i did it, it was probably one of the best things from uh, my experience in the house was actually getting to spend time with somebody who i who i truly appreciated as a person and as a man appreciate and uh and so what i'm hoping to do today is kind of unlock as much of ty as we can uh so that people get a taste yeah appreciate you bro thank you obviously you know you know how i feel about you since we walked in day one we said day one you know to the end and here we are even past that point so i'm looking forward to seeing where we go from here i'm obviously happy to sit down with you someone that has your mind and your mindset and something that we both appreciate about each other in terms of how, how we how we think about situations in life in general so i'm excited to see what comes out of this and hopefully give people a, a different perspective on not just myself but yourself as well as a person because a lot of my experience you know intertwines with you Absolutely. So hopefully they can see my perspective and why I see you as my brother forever. You That's know? it. All right. Well, let's give them what they want. Yep. Um, let's start with uh, with your experience in the house. You were a lone soldier mm -hmm. for a big part of that game. Yep. Um, it seems like you took that on really <clears throat> easily. Like being a lone soldier was something that you could handle. Yep. Um, where does that come from? Like how did Ty excel even when things got harder, it seemed? Yep. I think that just growing up in life, like I was, I had to grow up really quickly myself and figure life out myself. So going into a, a reality game show wasn't anything, you know, that stressed me out too much, especially if I had, you know, 15 people against me. I'm used to having the world against me. So 15 people is like nothing to me, right? Um, and at the end of the day, it's like, you know, maneuvering situations with, within a game, I can always revert back to that. It's just a game. If I lose this competition, it's just a game. If I, you know, lose this relationship with a person, it's just a game. But in real life, it could be my life if I make the wrong decision, right? So those are situations where it kind of uh, gave me a, gave me thick skin. Yes. Heading into this and not and not worrying about what the worst case scenario of a game was because my life would still be there at the end of the day. The people I love are still safe. You know, I will, will still have a roof over my head, food on the table. So those are things that kind of gave me comfort in terms of being alone. And understanding that I'm more than capable of handling myself. I didn't need people. I didn't need an alliance of five people. I didn't need, I'm not gonna name names, but I didn't need other people to back me up. I wanted to play with people, but I didn't need to play with people. And that's something that I knew about myself and something that I leaned into once I needed to because people were showing me that they didn't want to work with me. So, all right, I'll work with myself. So when you say something like that, like when people are listening and they're they're hearing that, is that a that belief, that confidence, that comes from something that comes from obviously from within, yeah. but you've built that up over time. Mm -hmm. And so the way you were brought up, is that where that confidence come from? It comes from, is that where the belief in yourself comes from? Yeah. I think, like I said, just, you know, situations that I've dealt with in real life, you know, when there's lives on the line and like livelihoods on the line and things that my friends and family have experienced and like seeing them maneuver it. And just like, even my mom, that's somebody that I obviously reference a lot and like seeing what she experience throughout her life and what she had to go through to make sure I was okay as a kid my little brother was okay um she taught me she's the first kind of example of how to take on the world by yourself and then do it with a smile on your face like she never complained 
At least I never saw her complain. She always had a smile when I came home. Um, even though, like, as I got older, I realized the struggles that the struggles that she was experiencing. She never made it known to me. She mm-hmm. always hid that, hid that stuff away from me and like just figured it out. And that's something I live by now. Is like, if there's a situation in front of me that's tough, don't complain about it. Just figure it out. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and bitch about it. You know what I mean? That's yeah. not me. Complaining doesn't fix anything. If there's a problem, take care of the problem and then move forward from it. So, yeah, it just stems back to my my upbringing, the the people I had around me who, you know, set perfect examples for me in terms of like how to navigate adversity right let's talk about that the people around you yeah. you reference your mother throughout the show yeah. uh, there's there's times where it seems like you're drawing a lot of strength from her yeah. um obviously in the big brother house there's a clip where your mom is there yeah. and you can see that's probably the first time throughout <laughs> the show where like they show the empathetic sort of like yeah. side the, the emotional side of ty yeah. um where you could see that the how much you wanted to embrace her and hold her and, and, mm. and be in that moment she obviously means a lot to you yeah. can you kind of talk about that relationship with you have with your mom and sort of how that's been able to uh help you become the man that you are today yeah i think that my relationship with my mom is very unique obviously i grew up with a single parent she was 17 years old when she had me i'm 28 now and i mm. i still can't imagine myself with a kid so the fact that she had like an 11 year old kid by the time she was my age yeah. like blows my mind crazy you know so the, the amount of respect and love i have for her and just mothers in general parents in general who like take on that role at special especially at such a young age is like i can't even explain it but like my relationship with her is just like she whether she realizes it or not and i probably don't show it a lot but she's like my best friend Mm. and she's been there for me when i've had my greatest accomplishments and then also when i was at like rock bottom and felt like man i don't know if i could do this she was there sitting beside me crying with me so it's like those are feelings and emotions that i can't put into words but the love and admiration i have for her is just like incredible and if i could be just half the person she is and leave half the impact that i feel like she has on the people around her I would be happy with that. And that's why Amazing. I move the way I move. I, I try to look out for people the best I can. You know, I have this demeanor that makes it seem like I might not care from from time to time. But I think that the people who know me, who get the chance to know me on a personal level, they yeah. realize who I am at my core. So yeah, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm good with public perception doesn't bother me because the people I care about and that care about me, they know who I am. Yeah, let's talk about that noise a little bit. Yeah. The uh, the outside noise. Obviously, when you're in the Big Brother house, you don't know what's coming at you. Mm-hmm. When you step out of the house, there's a lot of noise, right? Yeah, people yeah. are saying one thing or the other. Uh, it seems like <clears throat> you've developed, like you said, thick skin. And, uh, and how exactly are you able to kind of stay locked in, stay focused, and not let the noise impact the way you kind of feel about yourself and yeah. the way you move forward yeah well i'm comfortable with myself not like no matter what happens i know that my intentions in this world you're not even just in the game in the world and like how i interact with people is always pure i never have ill intent for anybody even people who i know may have ill intent for me because that's not a weight i want to carry on myself or on my heart like i just want to make sure that you know when i when people experience me that they leave feeling like damn like he brought something positive to my life even if you know we go our separate ways at some point I never want someone to look back and be like, man, like he was a detriment to my life. Mm. So even in the game, when, when I know people are gunning for me and they're trying to get me out of the game, I'm still trying to look out for these same people and yes. say like, I don't want to gun for you simply because you see me as a threat, whatever it may be. But yeah, like just being comfortable in my own skin and, and comfortable in my abilities to handle myself is what allows me to have kind of that that poise and that, you know, confidence needed to move forward through adverse, adversity, through stress and whatever. So yeah, it's just knowing yourself, being comfortable with yourself and not allowing external factors external opinions um affect who you know you are at your core mm. and so those external opinions will die let's go a little deeper into yeah. those external opinions you come out of the house you you, you see certain things written about you or said about <clears throat> you and uh and yet as you kind of like you said you move forward you know you you weren't concerned about those opinions but at the same time um you obviously hear them and you understand them to a certain extent and you are somebody who's open to learn you're not somebody who who's afraid to um accept that maybe there are some things here that i need to to take on or take responsibility for and when you were younger were there was there a certain individual were there people that kind of made you realize that hey it's okay to take the walls down it's okay to open up a little bit like where does that come from yeah i mean you know the way i grew up was like showing emotions and showing you know feelings is weakness so like that's where i guess this kind of like cold demeanor may come from but i think that once i hit high school i was blessed enough to have a teacher uh hannah porter and she single-handedly changed my whole perception in in terms of like what it means to be emotional what it means to like feel what you feel and like just embrace who you are and and be okay expressing the thoughts that go on in your head and like you know the way you maneuver life because all of us struggle with, with things you know like nobody 
can walk through life Teflon and not feel anything about whatever's going on around them. Um, but I think that my experience with her through high school and then like she's still a part of my life to this day. She's like my first mentor, my my first life mentor. Um, she definitely encouraged me to dig deeper and like understand where these feelings are coming from. Like how can I use that to like positively impact not only the people around me, but like do positive things for myself. So yeah. It's interesting because like one of the things that I believe is that when you are when you give to other people a certain way, it's oftentimes how you wish people gave to you. Yeah. And clearly Hannah gave you an opportunity where it's like most, you probably self, you know, self-sabotage. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I don't want to open up. I don't want yeah. people to have an opportunity to see me yeah, in the real me. Little, little hard headed kid, like thinking I knew how life worked at freaking like 17, 18 years old, like not trying to hear anything from anybody. And then you know, she comes in and she's patient with me. I think that's what it came down to is just someone being patient with me and not just counting me out because it's this kid from Finch and Western Road who thinks he knows everything and like, He's destined to end up dead or in jail, all that kind of stuff. She just, like, she had faith in me, and she was patient. And eventually, like, I was able to feel, like, energy doesn't lie. Mm. Sometimes you're yes. in a room with people, and, like, the, the, no words need to be spoken, but you can just feel, like, who has good energy and who yeah. doesn't. And she's one of those people who just had the energy where I felt like I could let my guards down and, like, be vulnerable with this person. And that was, like, the catalyst to me being open with people around me and, like, being able to connect with people around me on a deeper level. Okay, so let's talk about that. So Ty, that guy, has yeah. now morphed into this guy. Yeah. Or that kid has mor <laughs> morphed into this guy. Yeah. But there's a lot of kids, man, who haven't maybe found their Hannah just yet. Or maybe their parents are going through some some personal stuff themselves yeah. and they yeah. and they can't be that mentor mm -hmm. that you need. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say to those kids? Like, What does Ty say to the, that kid from Finch and Weston yeah. or a similar upbringing yeah. who needs that type of support right now? Yeah, I would say first and foremost, be patient with yourself. None of us are perfect. I'm clearly not perfect, as you can see from all the opinions that people have of me. But nonetheless, every day I try to be the better version of myself. I know my intentions are always good in the world, so I can go to sleep happy at night, wake up even happier knowing that I'm going to try to be a positive light in everyone's life. And the people who I am experiencing, who I am connecting with, they feel that. So these people that have never met me in their life and cast judgment because of what they may see on TV or what they may have heard from somebody else, it doesn't phase me because I can guarantee those same people would love me if they got the chance mm. to actually know me on a, on a personal level. Yeah. So for the kids that are feeling like it's the world against them, I felt the same way. It gets better, but you just got to be able to push through and see yourself past that point. Like keep thinking bigger, keep dreaming big, um, but be patient with yourself. That's all I can say. Patience is everything. Like everything comes with time. And uh, and stoicism. Yeah. <laughs> You're a stoic guy. You're, yeah. You stay locked in. And these kids, there's a lot of noise going on around them. And it can be difficult, especially yeah. when, you know, you have so much outside influence, mm -hmm. um, ignoring the noise and staying stoic and staying within yourself. Uh, do you have any like tools that you kind of use to stay within yourself? Yeah. So I'd say like, first of all, knowing yourself, like I'm going to keep circling back to yeah. that. It's like, you need to know who you are, what you want to be. Like where I am now is obviously not my final form. If you want to say that, like, I know the person I want to be and every day I'm trying to work to get to that point, but it's a process. And at the end of the day, you need to understand what you need to do to get through that process to your end goal and for me it's like little things because they compound over time so first thing i do is like you know i have met my little ritual i wake up i make my bed because that's a win right off the bat yeah it's something so small but it's like i made my bed i can feel accomplished about something i get that little dopamine hit and now i'm ready for the next task like in the house you made our bed i made our <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i made our bed and uh yeah i mean like like i said it's just like something so small that's yes. overlooked you know what i mean um i like to read a lot I think it comes down to finding what you like to do, something that's a positive um, outlet or a positive action that you can mm. take that you can compound over time. So reading is huge for me. Something I did a lot in the house was walking and um, that just helped me focus. You know what I mean? Like walking just disconnects me from where I physically am at that moment and allows me to process whatever's going on at that time, whether it's a problem or a conversation I have with somebody or just my emotions in, 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 in the moment and trying to figure out why I'm feeling that way. Um, and visualization so huge so overlooked and you know i think there's been research done on it on how powerful it is so it's like to not do it is almost doing yourself a disservice like right. you need to see yourself where you're trying to be before you even get to that point and that goes back to what i was saying just believing in yourself and being patient like in the house in the big brother house i would walk before a competition seeing myself as the winner of those competitions before right. it happened yeah i see myself filling ball game before it happened i see myself putting on the veto chain before it happened and then when it did happen it was almost like, yeah, I expected it. So like it was, I was kind of nonchalant about it, but 
it's because I already felt what it felt to yeah, put it on. Yeah. I already saw myself as the winner. And I think that you can take that into your real life, whether you want to make a certain amount of money in your life or you want to you know, graduate by a certain age or you want to buy a house. But whatever your goals are, see yourself in that position and accomplishing those things before it happens. You got to feel what it feels to touch $100,000 or touch a million dollars. See what it feels like to put the keys in your house for the first time. See what it feels like to drive your car, your dream car before you actually get it. You know what I mean? Visualizing it and like feeling what it feels yeah. to have those things. Allow yourself. Allow yourself to believe this is me. This is part of my life. This is part of my journey. And before you know it, I'm telling you, you're going to have the opportunity just being thrown at you and you're like, well, here it is. I expected this of myself. So that's all I can say about that. I love that. And so, you know, I don't want to pump your tires too much here, no. but you win most of these competitions yeah, yeah. and you say something at the end no. when you win. What is it you say? You know what time it is. Ball game, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what does ball game really mean? Everyone's saying it. You got yeah, a ton yeah. of people who yeah, are yeah. loving it. <laughs> but what does ball game really mean to tie? Yeah, ball game to me is something that me and my friends just say to each other like during competition. So whether it's video games or playing basketball, whatever it is, ball game is something like saying game over. Like I'm here, it's mine. So in the house, obviously, as most people know, I had the majority of the house, if not the entire house trying to get me out. So I didn't have any supporters. I didn't have an alliance to like pat me on the back when I won or nothing like that. So when I won, because I was my one man alliance at that time, I had to hype myself up, be my own hype man. Same ball game was that way of like reaffirming to myself that this is mine. Like mm. I'm here, come get me. I'm still here and I'm going to win. And that's interesting because a lot of people saw that as somebody who was being cocky yeah. or somebody who's being arrogant. Yeah. But what you're saying is ball game was actually just something where it was you hyping you. It was for yeah, you. It yeah. wasn't against anybody yeah, else. Not at all. Like I'm I, Again, I, I don't put anybody down. I don't need to make anybody else feel little to make myself feel good. And even during the competitions, I'm not, I haven't watched the entire season. I'm not sure if they show. Like Even when I'm competing against like someone like Hope, for example, who I know is actively gunning for me to get out of the game, I'm still cheering for I'm like, come on, hope you got this. Like, actively giving these guys encouragement because, I, again, I believe in my own ability to mm. get the job done. I don't need to put anybody down, whether it's hope. It doesn't matter who it is. I don't need to put people down to know that I can get this job done myself and win. So, yeah, ball game is just a matter of, you know, showing yourself that you're here to play, you're here to compete, and I'll get the job done whether you guys want me to or not. That's, what, that's my mentality. And you know... That that ball game, what do you think your boys back home and the people you yeah, care about yeah. you, when they see you yelling ball game, yeah, yeah. So to, what do you think that's all? Like, <laughs> how do you think they're responding to that? Yeah, so to certain people, it's arrogance and cockiness, but to other people, it's like, that's my guy. I see myself in that person. So, like, those are the people I'm trying to connect with. They know what I mean when I'm saying ball game, and I'm sure they're screaming ball game when they're looking at their screen. So that's all That's all I care about, that I, I connected with the people that I wanted to connect with. If you don't feel me, no hard feelings, but the people that feel me feel me, and that's what I care about. And that's huge. That's huge. It's it's staying true to yourself. Yep. And uh, it's interesting. Like staying true to yourself, I think, is one of the main reasons why you were so successful in the house, but then also coming out of it. Uh, a lot of the players that we were in the house with, they were sort of just going to do whatever the majority mm -hmm. told them mm -hmm. to do. You never cared what the majority was going to do. Mm -hmm. You did what you thought was right and what th you thought was best for either yourself or the people that you were closest mm -hmm. to. Can you kind of speak to why you were so comfortable doing what was right in your mind rather than what everyone else was doing for sure i think that you know in the house and in life people make decisions to follow the masses because of fear of looking like an outcast or fear of going against the grain for whatever repercussions that may have in the house it could mean that next week you're a target for me i didn't care because nobody in the house put any fear in my heart socially or competitively like i knew what i was capable again going back to knowing myself mm -hmm. i knew what i was capable of Nobody could make me feel afraid for making a decision that I wanted to make. I wanted to be true to myself. If that meant voting to keep somebody in to show them, like, I have your back regardless, because loyalty loyalty is a huge thing for me. Mm. So if I could show someone loyalty, like, I'm willing to tell everyone else, fuck off, I don't care, I don't care about your opinions, I'm still going to vote to keep this person, I would do that. And the same reason why I was telling everybody, Zach's still my brother to the end of that game, no matter how they felt about him. I don't care what people think about my decisions. I already had time to process my thoughts and, like, what people and situations mean to me. I made up my mind. That's what it's going to be. I'm going to stand on it, whether it gets me out of the game or not. And in life, it's the same thing. You need to process situations, process people, process circumstances. And once you make up your mind, follow through on it because there's nothing worse than someone who's indifferent, who's sitting on the fence and doesn't know where they fall. Like, if you can't make up a decision, like, if you're not with anything, you're going to fall for, you're going to fall for anything. Yes. You got to make up your mind, stand on it. And whether it's the right or wrong decision, doesn't matter. If it's the wrong decision, you learn from it, move forward and make a, a better decision next time. But for me, again, 
not fearing the outcome of anything. I didn't fear going against the house. A lot of these people did. I didn't fear making somebody mad. A lot of these people did. Yeah. I didn't fear being targeted. A lot of these people did. Yes. So for me, whatever my decisions, you know, were going to bring me, I was ready for it. And and one of the things I think is really interesting, and maybe you can touch on this, is oftentimes people in life or in the house, they second guess the decisions that they make. And you are a, a big advocate for once a decision's been made, you move forward from it. Yep. And a lot of people seem to dwell on decisions that they made in weeks previous and they and they had a hard time moving forward. Whereas you seem to learn from those decisions. Yep. Is that something that you think help differentiate you in the house? And mm -hmm. is that, you know, is that a skill set that you think is, is learnable for, for people? Yeah, I think that <clears throat> in every tough situation, there's something good to be taking out of it. So if you're in a, in a situation where you felt like you made the wrong choice, cool, sitting there stressing about it isn't gonna change the fact that you made that decision. So what can we do now to make sure that moving forward, we don't make that same decision or same mistake twice? Um, all we need to do is look back at the mistake you made and see, okay, this is where I went wrong. This is where I can improve moving forward nobody's going to make every single choice or every single right choice in life. So we're making mistakes every single day, maybe on a very small level, but nonetheless mistakes. And if you can just look back and be like, okay, well, I did this wrong. I can do this better next time. There's so much to gain and benefit from that, that kind of mentality that I never had time to look back and, and think, oh, I, man, like, I wish I didn't do that. I did it. So I own it. If it was wrong, cool. Next time it comes up, I won't make the same mistake again. That's, the best way to approach anything because you're not wasting energy on spilt milk. If that mm, if that yes, makes sense. Of course. Yeah. And another thing that I thought was pretty unique about you is when there would be an issue or a conflict, you you face conflict head on. Yeah. You would bring people into a room, you're like, yo, this was said and this was said, or this was happened and this yeah, happened. Yeah. And I think it made a lot of people, some people uncomfortable, especially yeah. the people that were maybe not telling the truth. Of course. And, and, and also it kind of exposed people who were playing maybe a less honest game. Mm -hmm. And um, is that something that you've done in life? And do you think that that's something that they sort of took out of context to make it seem like you were creating more drama yeah. when in reality you were actually trying to expose said, issues? Yeah, yeah. so... Um, I said touch one, but I don't want to get too deep in specifics of situations. But nonetheless, like in the in the house, it's all about a game. It's a game of deceit, yes. you know, misleading people, blah blah. For me, I'm a straight shooter, so like again, I may come off as a bully because I'm so direct, but I'm not a bully. I just like to get to the bottom of things. I don't like to like play this he said she said stuff and like you know kind of guess what people what's going on in people's heads. We can't. We're not mind readers. It doesn't matter if it's my best friend, if it's my right hand guy Zach or if it's my worst enemy, enemy in the house, which was everybody at some point, like I'm not gonna try to guess what's going on in your head. So if you and I, you and I talk and there's a problem and you're mentioning somebody else, I'm not just gonna take what you're saying at, at face value and say, okay, yeah, that person must have said it. If you said it in front of me, go ahead and say it in front of that person and let them defend themselves. Because the last thing I would want is for somebody to put words in my mouth and me not have the opportunity to address it and say, yes, I said that or no, I didn't say that. So for me, it's like, I always like to, like you said, face conflict head on and get to the root of it and then get to the truth because there's multiple sides to a story and hearing one side of it isn't isn't going to give you the whole picture and the whole picture is what you need, not just a part of it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and it's interesting because I think in the house, you were the only one who was willing to do that all the time. And mm. there, was, there was actually situations where I felt like conflict was averted or avoided because you were able to uh, bring the people into the room. And you're also, you're taking in information. Like you take in a lot. You're an introvert, right? So you're, you're typically sitting back and you're collecting information. And an introvert in the world or in this game oftentimes can be overlooked, but yet you seem to use that as actually um, a way to help advance your game and to help your game. You, you leaned into it in some ways, and then when you needed to, you stepped out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of talk about that, like how you were able to do that and sort of how you can use that in your everyday life? Yeah, so I think starting my game, I had a, my right-hand guy, Zach. You know, Mr. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Zachary Dakri, very extroverted, not afraid to step in a room of 16 people and completely take control of the conversation. That wasn't me. You know, I knew my role in that situation where I could, you know, play a little bit more quiet, more intimate with other people and, like, pushing forward agendas that we agreed upon. But once he self-evicted and, you know, for the, uh, the circumstances that arose, I knew that I needed to pivot. I needed to start being a little bit more extroverted, but also be a little bit more aggressive with my social game. And that meant having conversations with people and extracting information that I would have relied on Zach to get for me. Right. Um, but 
people didn't realize how I was doing that. Again, I connect with people on a very intimate level and get them comfortable with me. And once people are comfortable, they'll pretty much tell you anything you want to know, whether they realize it or not. And that was something I leveraged to my advantage, um, getting people comfortable with me and then pretty much seeing what they would tell me about people in the, other, in, in, the re- in the in the house, like the rest of the people. So I would be getting very crucial pieces of information from people without them even realizing it. And then I would take that information and leverage it in other conversations to pretty much paint an entire picture. I'm taking pieces of the puzzle from every different person and then putting it together myself. And like, I would say by the final nine in the house, I knew where everyone stood with each other. I almost knew the, the exact sequence in which people would be leaving the house. I knew where I stood in that sequence, but I knew once I got to that point, if I could survive that, which was the double eviction, then I I run the, I was gonna run the game and that's exactly what happened. So in the real world now, I think that being an introvert is almost seen as like a bad thing, but it's not because actually you have like a superpower. You're able to connect with people on a deeper level. You're able to have them open up to you because you know how to be empathetic to what they're going through and like, you know, put yourself in their shoes. And a lot of times people just want to be heard. They want to feel heard. They want to feel seen. And if you can make them feel those things, they're more than willing. I'm more than happy to share with you pretty much whatever they, whatever you want. So um, I use that to my advantage in the real world to like really help people through troubling times. Like I've had many friends hit me up, you know, with situations they're going through, like suicide and stuff like that. And I've been able to talk them through that and you kind of, you know, guide them on how to get themselves out of that situation. So I'm, I'm blessed and I'm happy to be an introvert because it's like my, it's my superpower. Absolutely. And I think, you know, you've touched on this in the past, like, well, in, in, from your past, you've sort of shared with me, you know, kind of how you like to try and help people, mentor people, yeah. uh, support people, whether it be people in your family or yeah. friends. And I think you try to do similar things in the house. And sometimes our greatest strengths are our greatest weaknesses, right? Like you can almost go too far with yeah. it, but that's who you are. You're yeah. somebody who wants to support people. You want yeah. to help people. Yeah. Um, when you do that, it can be difficult at times, right? Because some people aren't ready for the help yeah. or they're not quite sure, you know, or they may make a decision that you disagree with. Mm-hmm. Um, at what point, like, is it too much? You know, at what point is it too much? Or is it just something where you, you know, c- can you cut bait with somebody if necessary? Like, how do you go through that? Because I think a lot of people struggle. They're, they they want to change friend groups. They want to grow. They want to become a better version of themselves. Yeah. And they're kind of stuck mm-hmm. with a similar, uh, or sort of people that they used to be like, and they yeah. want to grow and they want to change. So stepping out of that, um, is that something that you did on your own? Is that something where you had to kind of like find other people to mm. like grow with? Talk about the growth of Ty, the kind of the maturation pro- yeah. process that you went through. Yeah, so I think that I'm just innate, like you said, I'm just innately a person that likes to help other people. I hate saying no to people. Like if someone needs help, I'm going to say yes and try to figure it out for them. Um, but obviously we get to a point where there's people who are grateful for everything you do for them. And there's people who, either are ungrateful or they simply just try to take advantage of you. And I experienced that in a house where people I feel like thought they were gaming me because I was so willing to overlook the red flags. I was I was so willing to overlook them working against me, but they weren't fooling me. I knew they were working against me. I'm just such a forgiving person that I'm like, don't worry about it. Just move on. You know what I mean, like for me, it's like, I don't look back and hold things against people. We're playing a game and I'm willing to move past those things to continue playing my game. And I'm gonna continue to be as good of a person as I can no matter what your intentions are with me. Because your intentions shouldn't alter my intentions. Mm. I always have good intentions. Again, me being good within myself and knowing what I want to bring to the world and bring to the people around me. Um, I'm not going to let somebody who has a, a different type of energy fuck up my energy. Right. Um, so in life, I think it's the same thing. It's like, we always need to be aware of the energies around us. Like, don't be naive to it, but also don't let it change you. And like, I don't like to give up on people because I feel like there's could I've been giving up People have given up on me a lot throughout my life. And like, like I said, if I didn't run into someone like Hannah who didn't give up on me and who was patient with me, I probably wouldn't be the person I am today. Yes. So I try to be that same kind of like lifeline to other people where they, I see in them what they may not see in themselves yet, you know, but everyone has their limits. Just make sure that you're filling your cup as much as you're, Absolutely. you know, filling, other, filling the cups of other people, um, knowing your limits, knowing yourself and, and staying true to yourself. Staying true to yourself. That, that seems to be a theme with you. Yeah. That's kind of who you are. Um, And so let's say, you know, coming out of the house, you go into this real world again and you got this attention on you now, right? And people are going to pull you all sorts of different ways, Mm -hmm. but it's about staying true to yourself, staying true to Ty. So with everything that's coming at you, coming, you know, back into 
the real world. Yeah. What's it been like? And sort of how have you managed to navigate that? Yeah, so obviously coming off a show, especially being the winner, like there's tons of opportunities, whether it's brand deals or interviews and podcasts and all types of, you know, positive opportunities. But for me, again, staying true to myself, I need to make sure that whatever I do engage with is aligns with who I am and who I'm trying to become. So I don't just take anything. I got to work with people who I respect, who I think are pushing a message that I can stand behind, whether it's a brand or it's a podcast, whatever it is. Um, it just needs to be something that is respectable and something that I can be proud to say is associated with my name. Because at the end of the day, my reputation is all I have. You know what I mean? If I lose that, then I lose all credibility with people. So I know who I want to be, who I want to be seen as, and who I want to be felt as. So um, any opportunities that I take on needs to align with it needs to align with that. Yeah, so your values, right? Yeah, my values, yeah. And it's the values that kind of define either a brand or a person. And so when you think about Ty's values, what's important to Ty? What, what does Ty look for in, in the people he surrounds himself with yeah. and let's say the brands he's going to work with? Yeah, so for me, I, you know, for people, loyalty is huge. You know what I mean? I don't, like, going back to Big Brother, walking in the house, I didn't care how strong a player was socially. I didn't care how strong they were competitively. I wanted loyalty. You know, day one, I walked in with the first four people, barely had a conversation with them. I said, yo, this is my final four. And I, I meant that. Mm. You know what I mean? With Zach, I said, you're my final two. I meant that. I didn't care, you know, how strong of a player he would be. He would be. I didn't get to see it yet. So I wasn't basing it off of statistics. I was basing it off of loyalty. Like, if we're going to say we're, we're doing this together, we're doing it together, we're going to ride it out, however it plays out. Um, so loyalty is huge for me. You know, uh, respect, huge. Um, I think respect is like the foundation of any relationship, whether it's with a brand, with a person. And if there's not a mutual respect there, then you, you shouldn't be in that situation. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're selling yourself short. You're putting yourself below a certain standard that I feel like everybody should hold themselves to in life. I think the, the final thing is principle, like doing things not because it's expected of you doing it because you feel it's right. You know what I mean? Like I move a certain way with people where if my mom was to watch me in a situation, she could be like, okay, I raised my son right, you know? So even on the TV show, when I'm, when I'm shown in certain lights and like, you know, I'm frustrated in a moment, so I might speak a little bit more aggressively or my demeanor might be a little bit cold and people are saying, oh, Ty doesn't respect women, Ty is this, Ty is that. My mom knows who I am. So she knows that all this noise is not who I am. Mm. Zach was my right-hand guy, so that was my number one, but the people I respect most after that, Kuzi, Claudia, Santina, all females. So how can I not respect female? How can I be misogynistic in these things? And all people that at one point either went against you yeah. or the people you were working with, and yet you still attempted to kind of mend those yeah. relationships. Yeah. And with Claudia, you did. I did, yeah. And I think it speaks to who you are, where it's yeah. like, yeah, they may have done something, but you were still willing to, to yeah. try again because exactly. you do care. Exactly. And like, you know, so I don't hold things like gr grudges are so heavy that like for you to be carrying grudges throughout your life day to day to day is like so much wasted energy that you could be using to feel yourself in a positive way. It's not even, it's, there's no way you could paint it to me where it's beneficial to you mm. in any light. So just always like being somebody who you're like knowing yourself, it's always going to come back to that. Like stand on your principles, be respectful to others the way you would want to be respected and just like be loyal to whatever it is. Whether it's people, your mission, your values, like be loyal to you. Yeah, you know what I mean, and everything around you. And everything a brand, you, stand for. you sign a contract. Yeah. do it. You know, yeah. so if you're gonna if you're gonna align with a brand, yeah. be loyal to that brand. Yeah. Be an advocate for that brand. Exactly. That's that's who you are. Yeah, exactly. So I think that that's you know that's powerful. And when people are kind of um, trying to find themselves in this influencer space and, mm -hmm. and with the opportunities get thrown at them, I think people can sometimes get lost in yeah. just doing whatever comes yeah, their yeah, way. Yeah. Uh, you seem to have surrounded yourself with some people who can support you as well. This system yeah. that you're that you're building, where you are becoming the brand, mm -hmm. that's a scary thing for yeah. a lot of people to try mm -hmm. and like put themselves out there and say like I'm going to be the brand of Ty. Yeah. And do other people want to come aboard? And there's obviously people that do. So you visualize that, and you're, and you're moving forward in that. What's that been like trying to find the right people to work with outside of the house? Yeah, um, for me, I never just wanted to jump on board with like the biggest name brand or whatever. Like, cool if a, if a large entity aligns with again my values and who I feel I am and who I want to be, great. But if not, I'd rather find a small team of people who have the same vision as myself, who have the same work ethic, who have the same drive, values, respect, loyalty, like people that I feel like I can work with in the long run and build something special with. You know, I don't care to just jump on the coattails of something that's already built and just be like, yeah, I'm part of this, but it's not mine. I want to be myself. I want to push myself and my my mission forward, push my voice out there so that people that I want to connect with can hear me and be like, yo, that's my person. You know what I mean? Something that 
they can listen to him be like I believe in myself now I can be my own person I can make my own impact on this world um, so yeah just like making sure that I'm always authentic to myself and not just selling myself out to any and everything that passes my way I love it I love it now we talked earlier about uh, about you kind of making your bed mm. and pacing and doing these things we got to know you in the house and obviously we saw like the the softer side of Ty, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the more human yeah, side yeah, of Ty, yeah. uh, which was great. But I think what really made you you in that house was that you were able to develop like a mentality. I, I considered it almost like a military mentality mm-hmm. where you just were like dialed in. Yeah. You spent some time in the military. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I believe you could still go back if you, yeah, if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so obviously there they de- there's a mindset that's required. Mm. Can you talk mindset? Can you talk like Ty's uh, level of focus and, and sort of how that, uh, how that came to be? Yeah, so, you know, in the military, it's always mission before self, meaning like there's always gonna be something bigger than you. You're never the biggest thing in your life or in the, in the lives of people around you. Like obviously we're important that we should always prioritize ourselves, but it's like our goal and our mission, so long as it's something that's respectable and honorable, should always come before yourself. So, you know, you know, um, kind of going back to the game, walking in there, and even on my bio, you can see I said, listen, I know I'm going to be a comp beast, but I'm more than happy throwing competitions and acting like I can't win if it means pushing my agenda forward because the end goal, the mission, is to win. So the first half of the game, I won one competition, and I, I just needed to win the first one because I had a play to execute. After that, I didn't need to win until I needed to win. Yes. So when I needed to win, I turned it on, because that's what I need to do to get my mission complete. And I think that putting a mission before yourself not only allows you to focus on one thing and not get distracted by the millions of other things that's going on in the house, but it gives you a certain level of poise and confidence and like calm because you, you understand there's only one thing to accomplish rather than whatever. You might be fighting with X, Y, and Z person and wondering what they're saying about you. I didn't care about that because I knew that at the end of the day, the mission is just this one thing. And in, in order for me to get to that point, I just needed to win by that like halfway through the game, I just needed to keep winning my competitions. I saw the whole outlay of my of the land in terms of the alliances and where people stood with each other. I knew that once I got to a final six position, the game was already mine pretty much. So again, focusing on the one thing that matters the most, the mission, and then staying true to that to that mission itself. And like whoever's on board with you and whoever is helping push that thing forward, make sure you stick close to those people and keep them close and they keep their keep their minds right because we all get distracted at some point. We all get we're all emotional. You know, we're going to have moments where we're down and not thinking straight. Make sure you keep those people close because you want your team to be on board. You know what I mean? But if there's somebody in your team who's not acting a certain a, a way that you can stand behind and say, this is in line with what I need to push the mission forward, then you got to nip it in the butt right away. So have a conversation with them or do whatever needs to be done to rectify it. And if they're not getting back on board with it, then they got to go. They got to go. So that's in the game and in real life. If people are not helping you level up in life the way you need it to be, have a, con- a, a real conversation with them sit down and talk to them because if you care about somebody you'll call them out on their bullshit i genuinely believe that if you don't care about somebody you don't care how they act you just like yeah fuck off but if you care about somebody you love somebody the way you say you do you're gonna have those tough conversations and be like this is what i need from you right now i need you to help me in this way because i'm trying this is where i'm trying to get in my life this is where i'm at and i need you to play this certain role to help me get to that point much like i would play it for you if you needed me um but if they're not really you know, ready or willing to get on board with that then they gotta go 100 percent and your father, he was military as well, if I remember correctly. Still yeah? is, he's still in. Still is still military. Is. So your father being a military man, so sort of what <clears throat> did he develop in you? The yeah. conversations you have with him, and obviously you followed in his footsteps yeah, yeah. to a certain extent before mm-hmm. you went off to school mm-hmm. uh, and you joined the military. Mm-hmm. What, what were the types of things that he kind of uh, instilled in you yeah. as you were younger? I think that there's so many things that I could have learned from my dad, but the one thing that stands out you know, way more than anything else is like his family orientation. And it's not, family doesn't just mean blood. It just means the people around you who are the most loyal to you, who care for you and love for you. So it's like, he's willing and ready to do whatever for the people he loves. If he has to die for the people he loves, I know he would do that too. So it's like, that's my mentality. Like the people who are working with me, I don't care, like I said, how strong you are mentally, emotionally, if you're a great game player, if you're not, I didn't care. If I'm loyal to you, you're my person, I'm going to ride for you to the end. So that's something that I've taken from him and like I, I, Took that with me in the game. My people were my people. Same reason why I'm throwing up shot callers yes, to the very sir. end. And um, in life, like my friends know that I'll have them through whatever. Doesn't matter if it's, I don't like. Doesn't matter what it is. They can just call me if there's a crisis, and Ty will be there. And I'm sure that I'm at the top 
speed dial at top of the speed dial list if anybody has a situation that needs to get taken care of because they know I'll always be there for them. Facts. So Facts. that's one thing that I've definitely taken from my dad. Um and I have to take off take my hat off to him for for being that for so many people in his life. Amazing. Your mom, your dad, let's say some people may not have the best role models when it comes to their parents right now. Maybe they're going mm -hmm. through different things. Who are some other people that you looked up to growing up for inspiration and for uh, a way out, so to speak? Yeah. So people I looked up to and that I still look up to are people like Nipsey Hussle, David Goggins, uh, Kobe Bryant, for example. Um, these All these people have traits that I, I love about them that mm. I, I try to instill in myself and take forward with me in my own life. You know, someone like Nipsey Hussle is somebody who is like motivation for people from his neighborhood and his upbringing and like the circumstances he comes from. And he's not just motivation, you know, through his speaking, he is an action taker. He shows through his actions like what it means to be from these these circumstances and be able to make it out in his own way. That's something that I, again, knowing yourself and being yourself, being authentic and still being able to be successful in that in your skin. So that's something that I look up to Nipsey also for. Rest in peace to him. Um, David Goggins, just his mentality of like fuck you, I'm gonna get it done. You yes. know what I mean? Like he's a little aggressive, but that's completely fine to me. I don't. That's his way of addressing life and maneuvering life. Um, but just his mentality of saying, like, you know, I'm not going to let any circumstance hold me down or a situation, like, limit me to what, I, what I'm what i able to do in my life and just getting it done, not making excuses, not sitting there bitching about it and crying about it, just getting it done, figuring it out. Um, and then Kobe Bryant, man, that guy's work, ec work ethic is just crazy. So I like to think I have a half-decent work ethic. Might not be Kobe's level, but that's something I aspire to have. Just something, like, waking up, and just destroying each and every day because you're trying to be a better version of yourself every time you open your eyes. So those are three people that I look up to. Again, I don't know any of them personally, um, but you don't need to know these people personally to be able to aspire to have traits that they exude themselves. And so let's let's stay on that then. So yeah. the traits that they exuded, what's <clears> the trait <throat> that Ty has that you want people to understand and maybe they can get some uh, confidence from that yeah. or some guidance from it? I think one thing at least I recognize in myself is my poise and my ability to kind of stay calm under pressure, especially under high, under high stake situations and high pressure situations. Um, there's a certain level of calm knowing what you're capable of. So that all ties back to like knowing yourself, knowing what your abilities are and believing in yourself. Even when people don't believe in you, you have to be your first supporter, your first hype man, your first, you know, cheerleader, so to speak, before people believe in you. So people were against me the whole game in the Big Brother house, but at the end of it, they couldn't deny what I did in the house. And that's mm -hmm. because I cheered for myself first. I was yelling ball game first before anybody wanted to start yelling ball game with me, you know? So just believing in yourself and understanding that you had everything you need in this life is found within you. It's even better to have people around you who see that in you and who support that and who like, you know, help to, you know, blow up your natural talents and your natural abilities. But it all starts with you. So just understanding that once you believe in yourself, the level of calmness that you can bring to yourself no matter what life throws at you is like, it's unexplainable. Poise. Poise. And so that poise that you had in the house, I remember at one point, things are going crazy. People are yelling at me. People are screaming and you come up to me. You're like, yo, okay, so here's what we did. Yeah, you got to tell you. And I'm like, man, are you not realizing the fire that is currently burning in this house? And you're like, bro, I am, we are focused. We are not going to okay. stop until we reach our goal. Yeah. And that poise I think what you had said to me that I think is interesting, and maybe you can expand on it if you're comfortable yeah. doing so, is you said, man, for what I grew up and, and what I saw, this is nothing. Yeah. This is just a game. Yeah. The real world yeah, that I got animal. out of, I had to have this poise. I had to have this belief yeah. that yeah. it's like, all right, on to the next. And so can you touch on that? Can you expand on that if you're, if you're comfortable yeah, doing course, so? Of course. So to make it very clear, like, you know, I grew up in a tough situation, tough neighborhood, tough environment but I was never a street person. Like I never wanted to be in the streets, but that isn't like the people around me, my closest friends were the ones doing whatever they were doing to, you know, whatever they knew best. You know what I mean? So I can never knock anyone's hustle. And like, you know, we all drew different experiences from our environment and mine. Thank God that I was able to see outside of it and think bigger, but understanding that even my actions could get me in situations where I could literally be hurt or killed. You know what I mean? So like, that's real stress. Yeah. Being in a fucking reality TV show where you might get evicted and get sent up north to a fucking cottage, that's not stress. <laughs> so I'm not tripping when someone's yelling and the house is, you know, quote unquote, burning down and people are like throwing each other. I don't care about all the noise. You know what I mean? So if 
the worst case scenario in the in the fucking reality show is you go home comfortable back to my regular life seeing my friends see my family great that sounds like a fucking a win to me but in the real world like where the way i grew up is like you make a mistake that could have the ultimate cost behind it and like that is real stress and i think that experiencing those things throughout my life those tough circumstances and like being in in in, in jams that i had to find myself out of or have my people help me out of th that prepared me for the game and has prepared me for the rest of my life just like knowing that whatever whenever i feel like this is the end of the world it's not the end of the world and where'd you grow up Finch and Weston Road, baby. Finch and Weston Road. You <laughs> you mentioned Finch and Weston Road when uh, when you're talking to the jury. Mm -hmm. um, can you expand on why you included that, and yeah. then sort of like what's it been like coming out? Has that been brought up to you in any way? Like, is has that resonated with people? Because um, it resonated with me. Yeah, like yeah. I, like when I heard it. You know, I was in a, I was in a, uh, uh, a theater with about yeah. 500 people <laughs> and I was the only one who got up and yeah. cheered when yeah. my boy won, yeah. but that line, it gave me goosebumps. Like it, it made me realize that this was uh, much bigger for you yeah. than, uh, it mattered more to you. And there was more impact that could be had from somebody like you winning than maybe some of the others that come from yeah. different situations. But to go back to the question, um, Finch and Weston, yeah. what does that mean? Yeah, so I think me bringing that up during my final speech to the jury was, it was, there's two aspects to it. Half of it was trying to humanize myself to the world and show them that whatever you may have seen on TV, because I got inklings of the, the character I was probably being portrayed as outside because of certain experiences I had in the house and like, can't get into it too much obviously because production, but nonetheless, I kind of figured that I wasn't being portrayed in the best of lights. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I took that time to humanize myself to the public so they can see that like, guys, like I'm just a regular person like you. You know what I mean? I wanted to call out the biases that I've experienced throughout my life. Like the way people judge me because of how I talk or how I dress, you know, my demeanor, whatever it may be. Like people judge me. They're very quick to judge me before they get to know me. And I think that's, we do that a lot with everybody in our lives. We, we make snap judgments about people and then we get to know them and we're like, oh man, like I was completely wrong about this person. And I think that that's people's experience with me a lot of the times, like, they make a snap judgment on me, but then they have a conversation with me and they're like, oh man, he's definitely not who I thought he was. And it's actually for the better because they get to know that I'm, I'm actually a very caring person. You know, I go above and beyond for people as much as I can. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I'm not this cold hearted person that yeah. people try to make me out to be. That's not, I could be, that could be further, further from the truth. Um, and then for the jury, I wanted to make sure again, humanizing myself because in there, they just experienced this very stoic person having to like, week by week to stay focused on the goal and not really show them the. I mean, they've experienced the kind gestures that I've made, but I wanted to make sure they know that guys, I'm just like you. They, they had the time in Jerry House to the kind of unwind to get back into real life. So I wanted them to, to make sure that they see me as someone that was just like them. So, you know, talking to both the jury and the public, I need to make sure that my message and the person I am within my core was heard by everybody in that moment, because that was one moment where everybody had to listen to my entire speech throughout the entire show you're showing very small clips of myself but that was a speech where everybody had to listen to every word that i found i had to say like i had the stage for once yeah. i had control the narrative for once so i wanted everyone to know that i'm just a kid from finch and western road you know what i mean and like people from my neighborhood can be like yo that's he's from where i'm from you know what i mean even if you're not from my neighborhood you're from similar circumstances and, and areas you can see yourself in me i connect with that and say like man this guy's in a final two on a reality show about to win the show and then to win in the fashion I did like I feel like that just drove home the point that like it doesn't matter where you come from it doesn't matter your circumstances your environment that doesn't limit you the only limit you have is like the limits you put on yourself so just be true to yourself be like don't let anybody else tell you who you are or how to live your life or how to maneuver be real with yourself stay true to yourself and your beliefs and that'll take you everywhere you need to be and how do you stay true to it now like you come out I was with you at a ball game mm -hmm. Uh, a, a, a baseball game, not the hat guys. Although <laughs> it did kind of work, but we were together at a ball game, yeah. and a guy came up to you and was yeah. like, "Yo, appreciate what you did, yeah. Rep and Finch and Weston." Obviously, community is important to you. Huge. You know, you came out and said you were going to focus on charity yeah. uh, and what work you could do. And, yeah. and you know, can you expand on that? Like, where's that come from? What's that all about? <clears throat> yeah, so I've always been somebody who wants to give back and like help improve this situation of people from where i'm from but obviously like improve my my reach to other because it's not just where i come from that 
experience the challenges that we experience. You know, it's fine everywhere. But I needed to make sure that I started at home. You know what I mean? Like, I need to make sure my home base is good and then work from there. So, like, charity has always been something I've been into. You know, I've made donations and, like, backpacks and money, all types of stuff to to my neighborhood and, and the schools that I went to and the daycares and all this kind of stuff. But now I'm looking, like, past that point. I'm thinking, like, how can I increase my impact? You know what I mean? I have this platform that I feel like I don't want to waste. I have, you know, a financial backing that I don't want to waste that I feel like can make a way bigger impact than I ever could have done myself without Big Brother. So, like, I'm just eternally grateful for the experience that Big Brother has given me and the platform that I now have because of it. Um, but, yeah, just always, like, making sure that I never forget my roots and where I come from and, like, never forget the circumstances that equipped me with everything I needed to win that show. You know what I mean? Like, all the hard times, all the, you know, the troubling situations I was in, the, you know, the, the, the tough conversations I had with friends, family, whatever, watching my, my parents struggle, like, those things all prepared me to win that show. Mm -hmm. Without those experiences, I couldn't have won that show. I would have folded at some point. I would have made the wrong decision and, and like, you know, backtracked and, like, I wouldn't have been able to stay focused on the end goal. So, like, everything in my life prepared me for that moment to win that show. So, in some ways, I guess, like, if I was a, a youth, a young kid, what you're basically saying is that all of these negative experience so to speak or the experiences that you've had you've been able to find the positive in them mm -hmm. and come up with a way to actually use those to benefit you yeah. long term yep. and i guess that goes back to sort of that one step in front of the, uh, another you mm -hmm. just kind of keep moving yep. keep growing keep yep. going just keep looking for it like you know you like i said you make a decision you stand on it regardless of if it's the right or wrong if it's the wrong one you take the positive or the lesson from that mistake and apply it moving forward don't have time to be dwelling over the past because the past is done you can't change it the only thing you have control of is how you move forward so make sure that's where your focus is yeah and you're you're obviously a very focused individual mm. um uh, you know some people are blessed with that mm. i think i think that clearly you're somebody who who can think the steps in front of them but then you're focused on the big picture and you're you're not going to deviate from that if that's important to you and that's yep. what you want yep. and so when it comes to finding what's important for somebody you know, do you have any ways that you can kind of help people better understand, like finding their, um, I guess, their purpose? Yeah, I think it comes down to what makes you feel good. Like for me, help, like seeing other people feel good about themselves makes me feel good, mm -hmm. which is why I love giving back. I love doing charity because I see the smiles it brings to like the teachers, the, the students. That makes me feel good. Like helping people who are going through a tough time in their life and seeing how they're able to get out of that and have a smile on their face again makes me feel good. You know? Whatever it is, like just having a group conversation where people are leaving that conversation feeling like, damn, I have some stuff now I can take and apply it to my life to better myself. That makes me feel good. For certain people, it's making a certain amount of money, like they're money driven and like making X amount of dollars will make them feel good. If that's you, ha like go all out, get as much money as you can. If, you know, helping people makes you feel good, help as many people as you can. If like being by yourself and reading at the end of your work day makes you feel good, do that. I mean, it all comes down to what makes you feel good. Obviously, it shouldn't be anything negative. It shouldn't be, you know, taking away from anyone else's life, including yours. But as long as I feel like it's a positive outlet of some sort and it's doing something good, whether for yourself or the people around you, that's what you should be focused on, not anything else that people have to say because, you know, everyone else has what drives them and they might try to push their agendas onto you, but that's just taking away from what truly matters to yourself. And, like, what truly matters is what makes you feel good. So make sure you focus on that. I love that. And, like... I used to make fun of you in the house for how much you would just be walking around. Yeah. And that makes me feel good. The house. It made yeah. you feel good. Yeah. And also you said, well, that's where you do your best thinking. Yeah. That's where you're able to find um, either the answer that you're looking for yeah. or uh, or come up with, um, you know, the best direction to take something. Yeah. So that walking, yeah. those, you know, exactly. those, those it wasn't, <laughs> marathons yeah. you would walk in the house <laughs> around it, it in circles. It wasn't just you. Everyone was like, not criticizing, but like calling me out on it. I'm like... It's hard for me to explain that what walking does for me because like I know how I feel like how I feel doing it and what it means to me because like it gives me clarity, but I can't really vocalize that so they don't understand that. If it doesn't do the same thing for you, you can't get it. So me walking made me feel good because it again it gave me clarity, gave me helped me process situations to find answers to whatever was going on, and that made me feel good. So if that's if walking does it for you, <laughs> go for a walk. If running doesn't for you, go for a run. If working out, 
cool. If sitting down watching TV after a long day does it for you, do that. You know what I mean? Don't let anybody else dictate how to live your life and what makes you feel good at the end of the day. Well, let's talk about that because you came into the house mm. looking like Goliath. <laughs> you left yeah. the house. Left like a string bean, man. Right? <laughs> <laughs> looking like a child, yeah, like a young crazy. boy. <laughs> You lost 20 pounds yeah. in the house. Jeez. Your mass was completely gone. Still trying to get it back. It's a battle. But one of the things I think is interesting, and you've you've said something about this on social media, so mm -hmm. maybe you can expand on it for people, is it's like, how long do you guys think it's going to take me yeah, yeah. to put this mass back yeah, on? Yeah. And what were the options? 30, 60, and 90 days. So right. one month, two months, three months. And, and what was the overwhelming answer? Well, people said 30 days. I think they have some faith in me, but it's the I'm not even looking at that. Exactly. I'm, not, I'm looking at the 60 and 90. All right, That's people, what I want to so talk people about. People are doubting me. All right, so now we got to do it in 30 days. So, so. who? Are, so these people that are saying <laughs> 60 and 90 days. That's a smaller percentage, but yeah. that's the percentage that you use yeah, to, to motivate yeah. you. So can you touch on that? Because this is something that I've seen a lot of successful people, Michael Jordan yeah, specifically. Yeah. It's like people praise, praise, praise. Yeah. All he's thinking about is that one person yeah. who said something negative yeah. and he goes off for 50. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that goes back to me not letting other people dictate how I feel and how I move in my life. Like I can't control what other people say. So all the love I get and, and you know, my fans, eternally grateful for it. I can't express how, how like grateful I am for people who acknowledge me as a person as, and as a player, but it's the people who talk shit who don't even know me or say whatever they have to say. That fuels me. Like it, it actually puts a smile oh, on my I face. I can see the smile <laughs> on your face right now. <laughs> it's so hard for me to fight it. So like, I'm, I'm almost more grateful for the hate because it's like, now I'm going to prove you guys wrong. You know what I mean? Whatever, whatever you're saying I can't do or that I, I should have done better. No problem. I'm going to take that and use that as positive fuel for myself to like push myself to the next level to make you even more madder. And then people are gonna be even more mad and start saying more shit and I'm gonna use that. It's a, it's a vicious cycle exactly. for those guys. Like if you hate me, then I feel bad for you because it's gonna be a long life. Well, I saw it in the house. There yeah. were certain scenarios where you would be calling somebody out on something yeah. and they would then show their, I would call them true colors yeah. where they would get upset and yeah. they would start to throw <laughs> insults at you yeah. or jabs yeah. at you. And all that that would do is you would start to laugh. You would start to like, yeah. look at it like, all right, yeah. perfect. Yeah. It's like, it's like you needed them to show who they really were and how they really felt about you or the people you were closest to, yeah. because that's what you needed yeah. to kind of get yourself yeah, going. Get, yeah. So for me, like, in tough situations, I mean, in general, I don't like to throw insults, whatever. Like, there's a clip of me calling somebody a clown, whatever. To me, whatever. That was something so small. Like, if me calling somebody a clown is the worst thing you've heard in your life, then we definitely shouldn't have connected. So I'm <laughs> glad that we didn't because like, Correct. you really don't understand what I've experienced in my life. Like, calling someone a clown is almost laughable. Yes. Um, but nonetheless, past that point, is like me laughing when, I, when I'm in 10 situations is simply because I'm not going to be the one to, like, stoop to someone's level and start bashing them and, and throwing personal insults when we're in a game, especially. And even in life, like, what does me telling you you're a piece of shit do for me? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. So it's like, I can sit here and call you X, Y, and Z names, but it does absolutely nothing to either fix the situation we're in or like, how us go our separate ways. I might as, might as well just go my separate way and like, figure, th figure out whatever's going on myself. Um, and just like, having people show me exactly, like you said, their true colors and what they truly feel about me is perfect because like, all right, now I really know where I stood with you the whole time. This whole facade you were putting on, it's gone now. I can see the truth. So when people are upset and people are angry and they start talking, make sure you're listening very closely because that's when they're having a hard time yeah. filtering their thoughts and filtering what they're saying. Um, by no means are, is anyone perfect. I, I'm very frustrated at times and I might say things in an aggressive way, but I always stand behind what I say. I can always say like, you know, whatever I was saying, there's truth behind it. Maybe I didn't deliver it in a very nice way, but I, you won't ever catch me sitting here bashing somebody. I'm calling them names because like, that does nothing. It, it really pushes. There's nothing good that comes out of that. And Absolutely. I'm more than happy to take ownership whenever I say things in an aggressive way. Maybe I didn't, you know, butter it up and like deliver it to you in the nicest of way where you can receive it. But again, don't miss what I'm trying to say simply because of how I'm saying it. Absolutely. And so. that fitness, that level of fitness that you have. Yeah. Um, obviously it's come from repetition. You've been in the gym, you work your ass mm. off. Yeah. Um, you know, you came out of the house, you put a challenge in front of yourself, yeah. like, yo, I'm going to get this mask yeah. back on. Yeah. Um, where, 
where do people start when it comes to that? Like when people need to like get in shape and they mm -hmm. need to like make themselves feel stronger because I mean, oftentimes these workouts, these walks, whatever yeah. it is, that's kind of how you get yourself going. You build yeah. yourself up yeah. and you are somebody who's now having to rebuild that mass. Yeah. Do you look at that as like uh, something that's difficult or a challenge that you want to take on? Like what's that all about for you? I don't see it. many things is difficult to be honest with you. I think that someone who's just done, like for me, Athletics and fitness have been a part of my life for my entire life. So like coming out of the house, I'm almost like I'm eager to get back into yeah. it and get this shit back, right? So, but I also understand that not everybody has had that path in their life where you know act, physical activity has been like a, a cornerstone in their life. So for people like that, it's like again going back to creating momentum in your life, starting small, something that you can manage and that's not like a chore to do. Mm. If that's just going for a walk once a week, start with that. Go for a 15 minute walk once a week, and then next week try to go to two, two 15 minute walks and build that. You're going to see how quickly momentum builds. Like when you feel so accomplished about something, you're like, I want to just keep doing this thing over and over again. Like you win once and you get addicted to that feeling of winning. And it's so easy to compound on itself over time. And before you know it, you'll be going from 15 minute walks to working out six times a week. Like I do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the workouts you do, yeah. they're not easy. They're not anymore, easy. They're not easy. They're not easy. They're not <laughs> not easy. easy. Yeah, but we're, we're not looking for the easy way out, right? <laughs> I did one of those workouts with you and uh, I think it was 2000 reps yeah. was what we had Something to get like done. It was, out, it was an outrageous <laughs> amount of exercises. I battled through it. You were in there, you know, you were, you were focused on the task at hand, the challenges in the house. Yeah. yeah. You were the beast. You were the yeah, comp beast. Yeah, they yeah, call you yeah, the comp beast. Yeah. And there was other people in there who mm. went in there with the mentality that they were going to be the comp beast and they were physically fit and yeah. they have these, uh, you know, the, the athletic background you yeah. did. And yet somehow you still came out yeah. on top. Yeah. How, I think, bro? How is that it, possible? How it, do you win? How many comps <laughs> you win? Uh, I had nine wins overall. Nine, nine wins. wins. And how many of them were physical comps? Honestly, I can't even say I I want to say three of them I could generally say are actual physical. Like, okay. I don't want to take away from my other skills. Uh, that's guys. where so we're going to get to, bro. We're going to get to. I say three of them were generally physical. So I'll, I'll say I had an advantage of those. Yeah. But to be fair, there was also other physical players in those comps and I still won. So people want to take away my accomplishments. That's fine. Do whatever you got to do. Well, so this but, is something I want to touch on because yeah. I think there was a stereotype mm -hmm. that you were only going to be able to win physical comps yeah. and i was trying to say like i mean there's podcast i'm like but he's actually a pretty smart guy yeah. and you might not be seeing that because yeah. obviously there's edits and you know yeah. there's only so much information that the show can get in on yeah, each episode and they're focusing on you as a certain mm -hmm. um you know character certain characteristics yeah, yeah, of, of yours um and so there's other comps that were more mental comp yep. or um or puzzles and what and you still did really well at those yep. Because you were putting the work in, yeah. you know, you were studying in the house. Um, do you find that there was some sort of stereotype around you? And do you feel like you, you the accomplishments that you had were sort yeah. of um, not seen for really what they were? I think that with the opinions that people have of me and saying that I only won because of X, Y, and Z reasons speaks to the fact that people actually do see what I did accomplish in there. They just don't want to accept it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, cool. I won physical comps against other physical players, and uh, I also won trivia comps. I also won puzzle comps. I also won what else was there? Skill comps. Like I won, <laughs> I won every type of comp competition that there was offered in that house. So the fact that people say I'm only a physical player just blows my mind, and it just really shows me that they don't want to give me my flowers, and that's yeah. fine. You don't need to give it to me. I already know what I did. Everybody in the house knows what I did, and the vote at the end of the end of the season told you what I did. You know, people sit here and say that. Ty had no social game. I've watched the first 10 episodes and the reoccurring thing that people keep saying about Ty and Zach is the amount of influence they have. How can I have influence in the house if I have no social game, guys? Please explain to me. How did I keep myself off the block during the double if I had no social game, guys? Please explain to me. How did I keep myself off the block the following week if I had no social game? Please explain to me. How did I get taken to the final two as the season 11 comp beast yes. if I had no social game? Please explain to me. How, time and time, what do they say? They have no, like, first of all, I don't respond to anybody. Of course. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have, like I said, I just take what they're giving yes. me and I use it to fuel me. Yes. The people who know, know what's up. You know what I mean? I know what I did in that house. My my social game wasn't what they were used to seeing. Fine. That's fair. But it worked for me. I, like I said, I'm an introvert. I can't walk into a room of 15 people and be the loudest person in the room, nor do I want to be. Yeah. I'm very much a quiet person. I very much enjoy 
personal conversations. And like I said, that's how I got the information I needed to position myself that by final six, I knew I won the game. So any, any kind of judgment that people have on my game, whether it's socially or my competitions, doesn't phase me because I know what I did when I was in there. And by the end of it all, my record spoke for what I did. Absolutely, yeah. it did. And like you said, the vote yeah. came out. What was it? Eight to it one? Eight to one. Shanae, what are you doing? Shanae, uh, nay, nay. <laughs> what are you Come doing, on. Shanae? Uh. <laughs> but apparently, I, I don't want to put words in people's mouth. So I will say this. Like, taste with a grain of salt. But what I've heard is that even Shanae wasn't giving me her vote until the very last second. I heard that as well. So nine to zero. That I mean, come on, guys. You, how are we going to deny what I've done in that place? You know what was it was really interesting is that you were able to rebuild your relationship with Claudia on the fly. Yeah, yeah. Like you were in there, and at one point she's got you on the block. You got her on the block, and like yeah, there's the goofy side of it, but I think there's a real human side to that as yeah, well, right? Yeah. Where like you were both of you were able to look past the flaws in one yeah, another's yeah, game or yeah. how you had treated one another mm -hmm. and come together. Yeah. Um, um, was that something that like took a lot of willpower? Like, how did you, how were you able to kind of get past that and build trust again? For me, I always wanted to work with Claudia. Like as soon as the show match started, I'm like, this is a person that I can see going final three with me and Zach. Yeah. Like I could see us going, and she was a beast herself. You know what Absolutely. I mean? So it's not like I can never take anything away from her game or what she did. Um, however, I could see, like she made it clear to me that her biggest fear was being seen as a threat with me. And obviously, we know my history with Vito. So if someone's sitting beside me and I pull myself off, it's yeah. not looking too good for yes, me, right? Exactly. So I can understand where her fears came from and like why she needs to play the game the way she played it, which is like to break things off and then circle back around later yeah, because yeah. it made more sense at that time. Yeah. For me, I never held it against her. Like, yeah, obviously I was hurt because there's personal feelings involved. We were in a showman's, but nonetheless, it's like I never held it against her. Like, now I have to target you because we're no longer in a showman's. You know, that wasn't me. That's not the person I am. Like, you got to do what's best for you. And even when she put me up, she did it in a respectful way. And I told her that shit to her face. I said, thank you for putting me up and allowing me to fight for my right to stay. You, she knows I belonged in that house, which is why she didn't try to backdoor me. Yeah. And the next week they did it. They made the same mistake. Renee made a mistake. Maybe she should have backdoor me. <laughs> but nonetheless, I think that the, the relationships I built with people allowed them to respect me enough to want to see me fight for myself in that game, which they didn't try to backdoor me, whatever, whatever the case may be. And by the end of it all, me and Claudia were able to be like, fuck everything that happened. Yeah we see where we're at now like we both respect each other's games we both respect each other on a personal level the feelings are still there let's kill this like yeah no, like us working together like at that point nobody could stop us yeah. I, I knew that personally yeah. Yeah. and i always have that confidence in myself but i knew that with her it was like guaranteed that we we're going final two and i think that she finally realized at that point that there's nobody to fear at that point like nobody is going to take over this game from us like at the end of it it was just me and her bouncing back and forth yeah. of who's winning right yeah. so we controlled the entire end game and I'm I'm happy she made the decision to like call things off at the, at the like earlier because she might not have been there later to have have been able to circle Absolutely. back you know so she made the right decision. Yeah, she did make the right decision. Yeah. I think Claudia's taken uh, taken a lot of heat. Yeah, for the decisions that she made, and and you guys have both been there to support one yeah, another. Yeah. You clearly you clearly care about her, and she cares about you. Yeah. And so when you're when you're looking for a partner, like someone to yeah. be with, yeah. obviously that's a it's hard when there's a TV audience watching, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, you got like 69 days in the yeah. house together <laughs> and there's all this pressure from the outside yeah. opinions. And like, yeah. again, your parents are seeing one thing, her parents of are course, seeing another. And yet course. both of you have found a way to stay close to one another coming out of this yeah. and mutually find some, you know, common ground yeah, and yeah. like work together on that. Can you yeah. speak on that a little bit? Because that's not <laughs> easy. Yeah. Man. Like this whole situation is bizarre. Like just being on a show in itself without a showman, it's bizarre. Like coming back into a world and being having to step into this new person you are like this new life that you have ultimately created for yourself but like doing it being attached or associated with somebody else is even more like i don't know there's only been a few show matches over the 11 seasons of yeah. big brother canada so like it's not even like there is somebody else we can kind of emulate it's our, especially our situation was extremely unique because we were show mats, then we weren't then we were a show mats, and then like we were the final two i think we we're the first final or first show match in history yeah, I heard that. Yeah. to make the final two and not cut each other before then, right? So we are like the pioneers, the the, the trailblazers in terms of like the first show match to ever make it to the end together. And like the amount of respect and love that we have for each other coming out of that and just wanting to see each other win, whether it's together or not, like we both know what our goal is, you know what I mean? But we're also trying to navigate real life together now. We were in a bubble in the house, but now we're trying to, like I said, navigate real life circumstances and like what we can do together outside of the house. Um, and I just think I'm super grateful just to like have someone that's understanding like her yeah. and like as, you know, 
personable and like she's just very patient and like very open and very communicative communicative um and i try to be those things for her as well and i yeah. think it's so far it's going well so yeah, yeah 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 so i love it i mean i think that uh relationships when there's that type of you know like eye on you mm. They're difficult, yeah. and and you came out of the house, both of you, in the like we're gonna try and see if this can work, but we're not gonna, you know, be pressured to yeah, make things yeah. more That's serious it. or less serious yeah. based on anything else. I think it goes back to what I was saying. Yeah, you no, off, but like, it goes back to what I was saying is like not allowing the external noise yeah. to dictate how you move in your situations. Yeah. And like with us, that's what we talked about. It's like let's not let anybody dictate what we become or don't become. You know what I mean? Like we know either which way. There's gonna be opinions on either side. If we stay together, people are gonna to be bashing her. How are you staying with this misogynistic guy, this abuse? But if you break up, they're gonna be like, well, told you so, Ty's an mm. asshole. Like he's of course he's gonna leave you. So there's no winning on either front. Right. So what matters most is what we care about in our situation. Like making sure that both sides are feeling comfortable, feeling heard, feeling seen, and that we're making the best decisions for us in that moment and not letting, like I said, the noise dictate how we move forward with each yeah. other. And speaking of the noise dictate things, you know. I had uh, an outside perspective of how things were going, mm -hmm. yet I had an opportunity to be in the house for the first four weeks. You know, we developed, a, I would say, a very strong bond, mm -hmm. a brotherhood oh. was uh, was built pretty quickly. And that's normal in that house, right? Yeah. I mean, guys, we guys connect. It's, it's that, easy. Yeah. It's like, yo, yeah. you got me? Yeah, I yeah, got you. That's okay, it. that's Let's it. That's it. all I need to know. And I never once questioned that. There was yep. never a time where I'm like, yo, I can't trust this guy. And mm -hmm. I don't think there was a time nope. where you felt that nope. about me. Um, when it comes to kind of creating that bond, it was it was interesting because when I left the house, I could hear people saying certain things to you about mm. me. Mm -hmm. Certain people in the house trying yeah. to be like, yo, he was this, or yeah. he was going to do this, or he didn't, you know, he wanted to put you on the yeah, block. Yeah. Shit that's not true. Yeah. And I'm on the outside, like, furious. <laughs> like, I'm about to snap. I'm, like, losing oh, it because no. I'm like, yo, that's my boy. Like, yeah. it bothered me more that they were trying to influence the way that you felt about me yeah. than even try like, the game. Like, yeah, I didn't yeah, even yeah. care about the game. Yeah. And... You know, I don't like to call people out, but like somebody like Dan had the same influence <laughs> yeah. and it got to him. Yeah, yeah. He started looking at me like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have worked with Zach yeah. or maybe Zach didn't have my best intentions at heart. Whereas you refused. Yeah, I'm not wavering off that. <laughs> you nah, refused to waver. Yeah. And the bonds that we had were real. And then we come out of the house and it was right back to it. Yep. What was that like? Like when people are coming at you and they're trying to change your opinion of something yeah. And you're just like, no, it's not happening. Yeah, like I said, noise. Like, I'm not here to yeah. be here and all this extra shit from people. Like, if you didn't have a relationship with that, that's on you. I, and I'm not knocking anybody for their outlooks on you as a person. People well, you gonna, should, but continue. People are going <laughs> to view me certain ways, whatever, but it's like, yeah. it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect yeah. me. It doesn't change who I am. Just like opinions of anybody else shouldn't change how you feel about yourself and your outlooks, right? So for me, it's just like, I made it, like I said, I already processed who I feel Zach is, me and him had a great relationship. Nothing you can say at this point is gonna change how I feel about it. That's my guy. I don't care what you said, we always had each other's back while he was here. There's nothing you can say to me right now that, that's gonna change that. And again, loyalty, you know what I mean? Like, I'm loyal to the end. So if you guys felt that way about Zach, and I'm telling you how I feel about Zach, come get me. <laughs> and they tried, but they couldn't They couldn't pull they it off, you know what I mean? Couldn't. So it, at the end of the day, it's like, it doesn't matter what people say to me about somebody else. I need to experience that person myself. And once I make up my mind, I'm standing on it until that person shows me otherwise. And Zach never showed me, you never showed me otherwise. So Hell no. I, I never had to, I never felt the need to turn my back on you or like make it seem like I didn't rock with you. Like that's not me. 